Nurses walked the picket lines this morning in Wilkes-Barre, hoping to let hospital officials know that they want a contract negotiated as soon as possible. And it's our top story tonight. Good evening. This is WYLN's Late Edition, Greater Hazleton's only local news broadcast for Monday, April 21st, 2014. I'm Ann Gownley. Nurses in Wilkes-Barre took to the picket line to inform the community of their contract negotiations, which have been ongoing for over a year now. An informational picket by nurses from Wilkes-Barre General Hospital today. Nurses were out before and after their shifts, so at no time was patient care interrupted. President of the Wyoming Valley Nurses Association, Eileen Wheel, said nurses were picketing today to inform the community and the hospital that they have been working on resolving contract negotiations with Community Health Systems, the company who currently owns the hospital. Negotiations have been ongoing for a year now. A lot of our, we have a lot of um, staffing issues. That's one of the main reasons we're out here today. Uh, we do hand out leaflets, you know, to community um, members coming here into the hospital just to let them to know um, some of the practices within the hospital. And, um, and also the informational picket um, is, um, again, just, you know, to, to let the owners know that, uh, you know, we are, have been in contract negotiations for over a year. Um, our contract expired a year ago, uh, April 30th, and, you know, they've made very little movement to try and um, settle the contract with the nurses' union. Currently, there are 450 nurses in the union, something Wheel says has decreased over the past two years. Since Community Health Systems has bought Wilkes-Barre General Hospital, we've seen this, the uh, nurse staffing, uh, nurse to patient ratios um, get higher and higher, which means there's fewer nurses uh, for at the bedsides. Um, each nurse is, is uh, taking care of more patients, um, and we feel that that's unfair to the community. It's unfair to the patients. They deserve uh, the best care possible, um, which, you know, even with fewer nurses, of course, you know, we try to achieve that on a daily basis, but it's very, very difficult. A statement from Wilkes-Barre General Hospital on the informational picketing was emailed to WYLN today. They say, quote, providing safe, quality patient care is our highest priority at Wilkes-Barre General Hospital. We staff our hospital to meet the volume and medical needs of our patients and in accordance with legislated and regulatory guidelines. For example, we have processes in place to ensure overtime is managed in accordance with Pennsylvania's Act 102. Our successful nurse recruitment efforts allow us to hire, train, and invest in the appropriate number of nurses to provide care. Every one of our employees is a valued colleague, and we strive to be a great place to work. Negotiations between Wilkes-Barre General Hospital and and PASSNAP are ongoing. We remain committed to good faith bargaining and hope a mutually acceptable agreement can be reached." Unquote. The strongest messages we you know, need to get uh, out to them is that we need to create ways to increase the staffing level here um, so that the nurse-patient ratios uh, are somewhat diminished. Um, with that, we also need to be able to recruit nurses and we need to retain the nurses that come here to work, make it a place where they want to stay to work, not a place they want to to bail out of, you know, is the first chance that they get. One woman we spoke with says it's a shame that it had to come down to nurses picketing outside of the hospital. They are not given value for what they provide for us. And what I'm trying to say is that they give billions of dollars to like, I don't know, athletes, but these people that take care of us, they are not being paid for what they are worth. And it's wrong. It's horrible. People that really take care of us are not being rewarded. You know, so they have to come here and stand out here and strike. It's a shame, really. Wheel says with the heavy workloads, it's been hard to recruit and obtain nurses at Wilkes-Barre General. They hire new nurses, especially your younger nurses coming out of uh, fresh out of school, and the workloads are, um, you know, so intimidating that they don't last, and they leave to go try and go work elsewhere where conditions might be better. The Nurses Association met two weeks ago with hospital officials, and now they are waiting for further bargaining dates. Wheel says they hope the hospital will put more money in patient care rather than spending it on avoiding contract negotiations.
A 22-year-old man from Beaver Meadows was arrested and charged with multiple drug offenses on Saturday night. Joshua Daniels was parked at the intersection of Church and 3rd Streets in Beaver Meadows in a school zone when patrolman Matt Williams approached the car. He noticed the driver and passenger had what he believed to be synthetic marijuana on their pants. Officer Williams then uncovered a small clear plastic container, two cigarettes, both believed to contain marijuana, and one package of rolling papers. Daniels then told Williams that he had $200 in his wallet and that he would give it to him if he would let him go. Daniels, who was driving the car, was placed under arrest and charged with possession of a controlled substance and possession of drug paraphernalia, both misdemeanors. He was also charged with one felony count of bribery. The passenger was not charged after Daniels told Williams he had nothing to do with it. Daniels was released from custody just after midnight. The Luzerne County Tax Claim Bureau will be selling 115 upset properties this Thursday. Director of the Tax Claim Bureau, Sean Shimani, told us that the county holds this sale once a year where delinquent taxpayer property could be sold. Right, of the 115 upset uh, sale properties uh, anticipated for Thursday, if no one bids on them in the upset sale, they would then go to what's called a judicial sale or a free and clear sale where the liens would be divested. And we do get a lot more bidders at that point in time because you can get some good bargains for the money. Well, it, it, it's encompassing of all taxes, so each of the taxing bodies would receive their share from the upset sale proceeds uh, based on the county portion, the municipal portion, and the school portion. Each of them would receive their share of taxes through the upset sale. If you would like more information on the sale, you can head over to nerevenue.com, click on Luzerne County, and then click on the Upset Sale tab. The Hazel Mart on Blackman Street in Wilkesbury was robbed again on Sunday morning. A masked man entered the store and reached into the register, taking $100 in cash along with a pack of cigarettes. A customer contacted 911. The store has been robbed five other times in the past three months. The business reopened Sunday afternoon. A store employee says he believes that it was the same man involved in at least one of the previous robberies. A fatal Wilkes-Barre fire is now being investigated by the state police. The fire occurred on April 14th around 11.30 p.m. on Wyoming Street. It claimed the life of 51-year-old Laurie Merritt. Merritt was found unconscious in her home and was later pronounced dead at Wilkes-Barre General Hospital. Luzerne County Coroner Bill Lisman said that carbon monoxide poisoning was the cause of death. Deputy Fire Marshal Trooper Ronald Jakara reported that the origin of the fire is unknown. Sugarloaf Township Police are investigating the theft of over $900 from Damon's Bar and Grill on Route 93. According to police, they were contacted by the manager of Damon's when it, was noted, when it noticed a bank deposit from February 6th of this year was never made. Police found out that 31-year-old Jill Yurcho of Cunningham was working that night and was responsible for the deposit. Officers checked the bank surveillance video and found no deposit was made. Police spoke with Yurcho, who was told them that she was going to pay it back when she had the money. Yurcho did later drop a deposit bag off at the bank with $961 in it, $30 more than the amount taken. Police did not state if charges will be filed against Yurcho in this case. A tractor trailer and a train collided this afternoon in Pittston Township. Emergency crews were called to the scene around 1.15. The incident occurred at the railroad crossing on Oak Street near Pittston. No word on how long it will take to clear the wreck. Authorities state that no injuries were reported. A dumpster caught fire at the Intermodal Transportation Center in Wilkes-Barre. Firefighters were called to the scene around 10 o'clock this morning. The blaze was quickly extinguished. The fire was contained to the dumpster, which is located on the ground floor. No other damage was reported. Civil rights lawyers who are representing a widow, 11 couples, and one of the couple's two teen daughters filed papers in federal court in Harrisburg on Monday. Those men and women are challenging Pennsylvania's law banning same-sex marriage. The plaintiffs are challenging strategy in the constitutional challenge and are asking a federal judge to make an immediate decision in their case. The lawyers for the plaintiffs are saying the trial is no longer necessary because the state's lawyers have not refuted their clients' claims about the relationships and tax benefits afforded to married couples. A spokesman for Governor Tom Corbett's office said they will also request a summary judgment from the judge instead of a trial. A trial date has been set for June 9th.
The state superior court has rejected an appeal of a Mahanoy City man serving a lifetime prison sentence. 59-year-old Bruce Bainbridge was convicted of 1980 of first-degree murder. Pottsville police charged him with a drive-by shooting that killed 28-year-old John Grifnovics of Centralia. A three-judge panel dismissed his appeal, stating that he filed it more than 27 years too late. The appeal was supposed to be filed within a year of his sentencing. The ruling means that Bainbridge will have to spend the rest of his life in prison. He is incarcerated at the State Correctional Institution in Montgomery County. Church goers gathered at All Saints Church in McAdoo Saturday afternoon for the annual blessing of the baskets. Our Julie Stefanovich has more. The Lenten season has passed and parishioners at All Saints in McAdoo brought their baskets to be blessed on Holy Saturday. The tradition dates back to the very first Easter Vigil. The Lord's Blessing is called upon the food after the 40 days of fasting. Father William Baker talks about the symbolism. The symbolism of the food, the meat that symbolizes the Paschal Lamb. Christ is the fulfillment of the Paschal Lamb. Uh, Christ is the living bread, bread and, and cakes. Uh, the food in general reminds us of Jesus coming so many times in the Easter stories with a meal or with food. He met the disciples in the road to Emmaus who saw, whose eyes were open when they saw him in the breaking of the bread. When he appeared to his apostles, he uh, showed them he was truly risen body and soul by taking some food with them. Greg Beelan traveled from Northern Virginia to spend the holiday with his relatives and brought an array of foods to be blessed. Every year for Easter, uh, one of our biggest holidays, and uh, certainly the blessing of the basket with all the various Easter foods, the ham, the kielbasa, the pasca bread, and the eggs, uh, and a little wine, too. Uh, so we're all set then for tomorrow morning to have our Easter brunch with all these items. It has been a long time family custom for Ed Shemansky and his family. His grandparents brought the tradition over with them from Europe over five decades ago. And it's just a really gorgeous thing and we enjoy the food. It's all great stuff. Some of the things you have in your basket. Uh, Pasca, the bread, the hulika, the egg roll, the ham, the kibasi, eggs, butter, uh, red beets, all the good stuff. Many of the families that we spoke with told us that they were looking forward to gathering with loved ones on Easter Sunday and enjoying their meals. In McAdoo, for WI Lenslet Edition, I'm Julie Stefanovich. Thank you, Julie. In other news today, Giant Food Stores is recalling Oscar Mayer classic wieners because of packaging mistakes. Kraft Foods is asking that they be removed from sales because the packages may contain classic cheese dogs and are not labeled as containing milk, an allergen. It is still safe to consume for those individuals who do not suffer from a milk allergy. The UPC code is on your screen now. Those customers who have purchased this item and wish to return it can do so with a receipt at any Giant or Martin's Food Stores for a full refund. A benefit is planned for a mother of six who was diagnosed with an aggressive stage 2 non-removable cervical cancer. The benefit will be held Saturday, May 18th at the Towers in Fern Glen for Stephanie Poncari of Beaver Meadows. The entire community is invited to the event to help raise money to cover medical and living expenses. Her friend John Katansky organized the event with the help of local musician Jean Babula. The benefit will have plenty of entertainment with 11 local bands hitting the stage. They say they will be, there will also be tricky trees and bake sales to mu raise money. A little slow, but right. we're still looking for donations uh, to come in and help. Uh, she has two young kids that are living with her. The other four are grown, but they live out of the area. It would be wonderful. The more people we have, the more money we can raise for her and her family. Uh, and I think it's going to be a good time, too, at the same time. <laughs> Babula was able to contact bands for their help. It's, uh, at, at times it can be difficult, <laughs> at times, you know, sometimes it falls into place really easy. This was one of those times everybody was available uh, that we asked, we didn't have to go searching far, and uh, everybody was, uh, yeah, count me on board, cartoons playing, um, Hooligan, they're from Pottsville area, Red Halo is from Shimokan area, uh, Sterling Cook Band is playing. And uh, we, uh, we have some acoustic acts as well. So it's starting at 12 noon, and it runs till whenever it's done. Again, the benefit will be held Saturday, May 18th, from noon until 12 p.m. at the Towers in Fern Glen. Tickets are $7 at the door. For more information, you can check out the Facebook page, Benefit for Stephanie Ponk